In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to not just make a bag with a sew-in frame, but how to design the shape and size of the bag that you want as well. So we're going to be making a pattern up. What I'm also going to do is to give this bag away. So if you'd like to subscribe to my channel, leave me a comment, or have a look at my Facebook page. You've got the details on your screen for subscriptions and a link to my Facebook page, which is Debbie Shaw Sewing. At random, in a couple of weeks' time, I'll leave the date on the screen, I'll do a draw, and you could be in the chance of winning this actual bag. If you're not the lucky winner, then you can still make your own. So let's start straight away with how you're going to make your pattern. So this is my frame and I've got a piece of paper I'm, that I'm going to make the pattern out of. Um, so what I need to do first of all is to draw around the outside of the frame so I get the right size. So from where the hinge is here, up one side, across the top, across the top and down the opposite side. And I've got a gap in the middle but I can just fill that in. Right, so I've got that shape. Now what I need to do is to draw a line, so it's about an inch from the end here, maybe a little bit more, let's take a look, an inch and a quarter I think would be good because this is quite a large frame. On a smaller frame I'd go for just an inch and draw the line out. So I've gone from that curved corner here and the way that it works on this end, if you imagine that corner pivoting and then swinging out, that's where I want my frame to finish or my pattern to finish. So in effect, that line is the same length as that line. If I was to draw this out at a right angle, then it would be too long here. So I need that to be the same length. Now, I'm not concerned about doing that on the other side at the moment because I need this to be symmetrical, so I'll fold the whole thing in half and cut it all out together. But what I need to do now is to decide on the shape of the bag that I want. So let's pop the frame back on top again and think, now, do I want this square or do I want it round? Do I want it quite short so I could make more of a, an evening bag or a clutch bag style with it if I make it quite short? That's like actually quite a nice idea. So let's have a play. Let's take this round, so I'll have a round bag and then straight across. Okay, so this is just quite rough for now. Let's measure here and just see how big that's going to be down the centre. That's eight inches there and just make sure that that's straight across the bottom. So I'm parallel with the centre mark here and then I'm curving around the side and back up to the corner. So that's basically going to be the shape of my bag. So to make sure this is symmetrical, let's measure across the top there, which is nine inches. Find the halfway mark, which is four and a half. And then I'm going to fold this in half. I'm just going to hold this up to the light so I can see, see through it. And then we'll cut out both pieces together. Or both sides together, I should say. <laughs> hey! Give that back. Come here, come here. Come and explain what you did. Come here, Bobbin. Come and tell everybody what you did. Come here. Come here. Tell every you got a you got a reel of thread. And you threw it around the room, didn't you? And you were chewing it, weren't you? That, that's a bad girl, isn't it? So, how about taking your rope crab and going and playing that somewhere else? Yes. Shoot. <laughs> Go on then. Go and chew that. Then, we're going to cut around both pieces. You could put a dart in here as well if you wanted that to be... Um, a little bit fatter, straight across the top. Go on. So that's my pattern. 
So let's transfer this onto my fabric. Now with my fabric, I've put some wadding on the back of this and that's going to make it, I'll give it a little bit of substance. If you're using a very fine um, fabric, even a cotton, for a bag it's not really substantial enough and you can tell that just by picking it up. So if you're not too sure whether you're going to need any kind of backing, interfacing or whatever for it, then all you're going to do is to pick up your fabric and see how it folds. That's, without the interfacing, is going to be how my bag's going to look. It's going to be all floppy, it won't look very good. So on the outside, I've just put some wadding on the back I normally like to use a fusible fleece, both saws a good one, Pelon do a good one, um, but I haven't got any. So I've just used some regular wadding and I've used some 505 temporary fabric spray just to adhere that on and, and um, make it a little bit firmer. So now when I pick that up, I can see how my bag's going to sit. It's not all floppy, but it's still quite soft and I like that kind of look. So let's pop the pattern on the top. Pin it in place and I'll need to cut two of the outer pieces and two of the lining pieces. So, two lining pieces and two outer pieces. Before I start sewing them together, do you remember where I made the mark, where I, I, I made the arc, the mark where the arc is around the side here? I need to transfer the edge of that marking onto, <laughs> onto my lining. And the reason I'm doing it just on the lining side is because now I've got the wadding on the back of the outside um, I can't draw on that. So let's just line that up to the edge of the wrong side and put a mark here. That's going to be within the seam allowance so don't worry too much about marking your fabric if it's a permanent marker you have. And then I'm just going to measure that against the other side and mark there. And then I'll use that as a template for the other piece of lining. So one there, and one there. All right, now we can start piecing it all together. So right sides together, we need one piece of the outer, one piece of the lining. I'll just put a couple of pins in there to hold them in place as I sew. And I'm going to sew from one mark all the way around the top to the opposite mark, so just around the top section. And we'll do that on both pieces. So, quarter of an inch seam allowance or thereabouts. I'm going to do a couple of stitches backwards to secure the, the stitches and then sew around the top. And then when I come up to the second line, again, back with a few stitches just to secure. I'll take that out. Now, normally, if you're making things like this, you'd trim around the top with pink inches or snip into the curves. Not going to this time because I want the fabric to be quite bulky because the, the bulkier that is, the more you have to force it into the frame, the more secure it's going to be. So this is one occasion where you don't trim. So exactly the same as I did with the other side. Stop with the needle down if you're going to pivot. Straight down here. And back down. Right, then we're going to sew these right sides together. So take the two panels and open them up and we need to sew the outsides right, right sides together and the linings right sides together. So let's flip these over and we'll do the outside section first of all. So as I line up the raw edges, you should see that the points where you stop sewing the lining are in exactly the same position. And again on this side, if they're not in exactly the same position, 
you may need to unpick a few stitches to make them in the same position because that's really important. Right, and then we're going to sew from that from where I finished stitching here on exactly that same spot all the way around the outside. I'm still going to go backwards a few stitches before I go forwards. Around the curve. Let's line those up. back to that seam on this side and again stop when I meet the other stitches and then go backwards. So I'll have those pins out, snip you off and then for the lining section turn the whole flap over on both sides and we're going to do the same again, so starting at that exact point, so in effect I'm going to have four pieces of fabric making up a cross shape. And I'm going to sew all the way around here, but this time I need to leave a gap in the bottom of the lining so I can turn the whole thing the right side out. So let's hold that with a couple of pins. And away we go. So there's my stitches. Uh, if that's so you can see what I'm doing, around the curve, I'm going to sew backwards there a few stitches, lift my foot up, move the fabric across so they have the gap, and around the second curve, and right back into where those stitches all meet now backwards. I'm just going to trim the fabric around the curve of the bag. If you've got pink in shears that would work. Just to cut down on the bulk on the curve. Remember we're not going to trim this bit. We'll trim those threads off. And then through that gap that I left in the lining, we're going to turn the whole thing the right side out. So push out the corners of the flap. I'd normally take this to the iron now and give it a press. Let's push out the curve of the bag here. And here. Then with the gap in the bottom of the lining, if you pull the two sides of the hole open and fold, just took this out of the way, and fold in the edges, and then I'm just going to top stitch straight across the hole. Right, then the lining will push inside the bag. I'm just going to finger crease this around the top. And normally I'd take that to the iron and give it a good old press. This is where all of those seams met, right in the corner there. So that's nice and neat. And then it's time to put the frame in. Now the easiest way you're going to do this to get it accurate is to start in the centre. So let's measure and mark the centre point here. That's nine inches across. So let's mark about four and a half inches. And I'll do exactly the same on the opposite side. So four and a half inches. Four and a 
and then we'll fit it into the frame. Now the frame that I've chosen here, the fabric sits on the outside of the frame, so you'll see the stitches and you'll just see the top of the frame. If you're using um, the kind of frame here, I know this is a lot smaller, that has kind of a, a groove in the centre, your fabric's going to be pushed inside that groove and then you'll see the frame from the outside. But that works in exactly the same way. So you'll still need to mark the centre point and start sewing from the centre, from the back, and then pull the fabric through. So let's take my needle and thread. And I'm going to take the stitch into the back of the fabric, quite close to the top, so that's about an eighth of an inch from the top, so that my knot's going to disappear inside the frame. And I'm just going to trim off that extra little bit of thread. And then lining up that mark with the centre hole, which is here, I'm going to take the stitch back through in almost the same place through that hole. In you go. Like so. So take your time with this, because the effect that we want to have is just a row of stitching across the top and the top of the fabric sitting very neatly up against the frame. So hold that in place and turn it over and I'm going to go back through the second hole, pick up the edge of the fabric and pull and then back through here again and back through the hole. So I'm stitching through every other stitch and just pull that into place, keeping it nice and tight, remember, and up to the top of the frame. There we go. So I'm going to stitch every other stitch around this way and then come back again and stitch through all of the gaps so it'll look like one straight line. So instead of doing a back stitch as I go, I find it easier to go all the way around one side, back up to the other, back down the other side and then back over again. And then we'll repeat this on the opposite side. I'm just coming up to the end of the stitches and I just want to show a little trick to hide the, the thread because you don't, want to, you don't want a big knot on the right side or on the inside for that matter. So I'm just going to go into the last hole here. And remember I've stitched every other hole then gone back again so I've got a straight line of stitching. But when I go back in again I'm going to take my thread just underneath the frame. So I'm not going through the hole, I'm actually going into the fabric underneath the frame. Pull it through and cut it so that it's about half an inch or a centimetre long. Then I'm going to take some strong wet glue and I love this Gutterman HT2 because it dries really quickly and it's very strong. And a pin. And I'm going to roll a little bit of the glue on the end of the pin and then very gently push that thread underneath the frame with the glue. So the glue is going to hold it in place. I've got a little knot there, which is where I first started. So again, wrap a little bit of glue around the pin and push it up underneath the frame. So that's a great way of hiding the ends of your thread and making them really secure as well. Remember, you won't be able to use that pin again as you wipe all the glue off. And there, we're finished. So all I need to do now is to give it a little bit of a, a, I think I'll give it a steam with the iron rather than pressing it because I don't want it to be flat. And that'll take away any of the uh, heat erasable markings I've made. But I think there, you've got a very smart bag. It's made in, um, it's actually part of a Christmas set of fabric. You can see the others just around the set here um, from the Craft Cotton Company. But this could be evening bag, you could make it in a faux leather, you could make it in something with a little bit of a sparkle, add the strap or a chain to it. What about a fabric flower really to dress this up? So you can have a very plain bag, you can have a bag that you really go to town on, but at the end of the day, you've got a bag that you've designed yourself.